Ah, there you are, Rose, my most skilled and nimble-fingered assassin. Although I do know this is very true, it's very unlike you. What do you want? Oh, nothing too much, Rose. Just here to give you your next mission. This one's insanely difficult, and I feel that you're the only mirror that can handle it. When you're ready, go ahead and meet your guide up by the river. Okay, will get right away, Ren. Alright, we got food, water, portable chamber pots. What? Why are you here? I should have known better. And why is there a boat? Oh, we're going off to High Isle. I thought Ren would have told you by now. We're going to go get a brand new mythic called the Oaken Soul Ring. Oh, and for you fellow adventurers going along with us, we have timestamps for you in the description down below. So if you're in a hurry or just need a particular piece, feel free to use those to get you where you need to go. Ren, you lied to me. That was your quest. I've never been much of a sailor, Rose. Enjoy your trip. I'll be sure to pay you extra when you return. Now go ahead and step in the boat, Rose. But you know I get seasick. All right, Rose, let me get us out to the open sea. Oh, I can already feel the boat rocking. Wait, Rose, not in the boat, not in the boat. Ooh, you have to build up your sea legs. Anyway, now we're off to our first lead, which is right over here in the crown jewel of the Sistress Archipelago, High Isle. This is where we're going to fight back nature's wrath for a lead called the Igneous Inlays. I might need to go pick up a map here. What's that sound? Are you all right, Rose? I just hate this place. This, the water and the sea sickness has run betrayed me. I just nothing good here. Aw, it's not all bad, Rose. Hey, look at the bright side. Now we get to go actually stop some volcanoes from erupting. Did you say volcanoes? I guess this place isn't that bad after all. Come on, Rose. Let's go ahead and go get a guidebook. Maybe I'll get you a sweet roll to settle your stomach. Sweet rolls of volcanoes? Let's go. This right here is a volcanic vent. You can find seven of them in High Isle. This is where you're going to find the Igneous Inlays lead. In order to obtain this lead, all you have to do is get a hit on the final boss. Once the boss is defeated, you'll see a little statue mound on the ground. That's where you'll collect your lead. And if you don't get it, no worries. All you have to do is find another active vent. You can do this by looking on the map and finding the vent that has the white swords on it, and that will let you know that the volcanic vent is active. Now, on to our next lead, which is over here in Stormhaven. This is where you're going to get the Lamar Gems lead. You get this by fighting Titan Claw, which can be found right over here on the map. Oh look, Robert, a crab. It's your favorite thing to play with. Have fun! You're gonna get me? You're gonna... Ah, God, Rose! Oh, seriously, Rose, you got me some crab. Get him off, get him off. Don't get silly, sir. You know what, Rose? I'll pass on this one. Besides, who knows? Oh, he'll be fine. It's not like he's going to kill you. Once you and your group are done crushing this crustacean, you'll be ready to head on over to Glenumbra. This is where we're going to go dig up the stone shank frame. This is another one of those really easy leads to get, as all you need to do is dig up any of the ore nodes that can be found anywhere around the zone. I found it easy to look for these nodes around the edge of the map, especially around mountainous areas. But if you're looking for a starting place, I can show you exactly where I went to get mine. Here, let me pull out this map and show you right quick. I actually ended up getting my lead over here by the Daggerfall Overlook area. If you go inside this bay and go up and down the shores, you can find all kinds of nodes. Another area is right over here by Daggerfall. If you go right outside of the town where the Delve is and you go up towards the beach and go towards the Shrieking Scar, you'll find all kinds of other nodes. And one last worthwhile area is over here by Eagles Brook. If you go up the beach towards Kingsguard Dolmen, you'll find another slew of nodes. Once you're done mining ore, you want to go ahead and head on to our next area, which is over here in Mobile Tor. This is the zone that we're going to put down anything that moves to get the sacred resin. Perfect, that means I can put you down, right? Now, now, don't get too excited, Rose. We actually have to put down any of the random enemies we found within the zone to get the lead. Fine, seems like the only thing we're killing here is my joy. Just tell everybody where the best places are to go to acquire this lead. One of those spots will be over here at Valen Harbor. If you haven't already completed the quest here, this area will be chock full of enemies for you to dispatch. If you've already completed this area, don't worry about it, as you can go right over here to Elias Ruins. You can find it right about here on the map. This little encampment has plenty of Malmer to take down, and they respond rather quickly. If these two spots ain't doing it for you, go ahead and get out there and search for a bit. There's plenty of other areas within the zone that you can go and mow enemies down. Once you've torn through the zone and reenacted what the wild hunt would look like, you'll be ready to go get that final lead, which is right over here in Merkmar. This is where we're going to pilfer the lead for the petrified oak loop. This lead is by far going to be the roughest one to get. Well, until the hype dies down, of course. This is because it can only be acquired by stealing it from lockboxes that can be found all around Bergmire. This may not sound too bad, but seeing how this is an extremely popular mythic, it's going to draw crowds, and that's what's going to make this tough, as there are only about 20 lockboxes in Merkmire. But don't worry, it's not all bad. In the middle of making this guy, there was actually an update. After hearing the anguished cries of the player base, the powers that be decided to go ahead and double the drop rate for this particular lead, as well as add an extra source to pull it from. That extra source would be thieves tropes found all around Merkmire. Though that's amazing news, keep in mind that's only for PC players as of right now. For us as console players, we have to wait till the next incremental update for this to take effect. 
With that said, let me go ahead and tell you where these lockboxes are so you at least know where you're going to go when you get down here. We're going to start this little crime spree in Lomoth. This is the main city in Merkmire. From what I've investigated and found, there are about 12 chests within the city. We've marked them on the map right over there, so feel free to pause the screen if you need to look at it a bit longer. Let's go ahead and jump on to the first one, which is right over here at Mock Teed's house. Once you're inside, you're going to want to go off to the right, and the chest will be on the table right in front of the bed. The next spot is right over here at Paustalum's house. It's right off the docks. When you get inside, you want to head to the back and look to the bookshelf. It can spawn right there. Once you're done there, head on over to the Marshland Market. If you go off to the right, you'll be right over at Pete Fire Smithery. The chest will be right there next to the fire. Now if you take a step back and go up the ramp, you're going to go inside the crafting area and find the next chest right here. It's at the end of the table in the middle of the room. You'll find it between the enchanting and jewelry crafting stations. And if you happen to walk to the other side of the room, you'll find another chest in the middle of those areas. Now let's go ahead and trot on over to the stables, called Phillies and Folds. We're going to find our next chest in the back corner of the middle stall, right here. The next spot's right over here at High End Furnishings. You'll see it's tucked right behind a dose of Aralor, right there. From here, we're going to go ahead and make our way on over to the Bog Brokers. There are four chests that can actually spawn in this little area. One is right over here at a shop called A Thousand Cuts. It'll be between the trough and the anvil. Another one is right over here at Serena's Serene Ironworks. It's right on top of the bookshelf, right behind the counter. The next one's right over here at Leathers of Lomoth. You can find it right behind the backpack, next to the table. And the last one in this small little area is right over here at Croaking Carpentry. And you should be able to find it right there by the flag, next to the workbench. And the last chest within this town is right there inside the Lusty Argonian Footman. You'll find it right there in the corner of the counter, next to the candle on the stand. If this place is too busy for your liking, you can go ahead and head on over to Bright Throat Village, which is right here on the map. We can actually find about four chests here. When you go up the ramps, you're going to find the first one right over here on the deck on the upper platform. You should see it right about here. And if you go across to the Bountiful Bogs Merchant, you'll see the second one right there in front of the map in the back. Let's get on over to the next lockbox, which is right over here at Vetra Jat's house. Once inside, you'll see it in the very back room in front of the wardrobe. And that last lockbox spawn point is right over here at Durky Heads' house. When you get inside, you're going to go to the very back, and you're going to find it right there next to the wardrobe. Now if you find that this town is also too busy for your liking, you can go ahead and head on over to Deadwater Village. You can find it right over here on the map. This little town is going to hold three more lockboxes. The first one is going to be right over here at Raj Kahl's house. Hop inside and you'll find the lockbox right there next to the shelf, right by the table. Once you're done here and ready to head on to the second box, you can go right across the street to Niswell Uaxel's house. Again, invite yourself inside. Make your way to the back bedroom and you'll see a box right there in the corner next to the bed. And the last lock box in this town can be found right over here at Naga Kerr Necessities. It'll spawn right there in the middle of all the baskets right behind the merchant. Now if you've tried all those places and you're getting really desperate, you can go ahead and head on over to the striking locale, Alton Merlil. There are about two lock boxes that can be found here. One of the lock boxes can be found right up inside Merlil Market. If you go up the ramp and right behind the counter, you'll see it right there next to the barrel. And if you head back down the ramp and go over across to the dock house, you'll find the last chest right here behind the curtain among the rest of the stock in the back. Seriously, Robert, can we be done? My fingers hurt and I don't want to get stuck in a cage again. Yeah, Rose, we can be done. It seems like I've racked up more of a bounty than what it was actually worth. But now that we do have all the leads, we can go ahead and go dig them all up. That means we're heading back to High Isle. Oh no, please, not another boat. Nah, we're going to go ahead and just use the way shrine to get there this time. Seriously, we're going to just teleport to there in the first place, and why didn't we do that? And like always, once you get that final lead, you'll now have an amazing new mythic to play with. This ring will give you a bunch of major stats. No, I mean it, literally. Look, it gives you major berserk, major courage, major brutality, major sorcery, major prophecy, Major Savagery, Major Force, Major Protection, Major Resolve, and Major Heroism. And it follows up with notes of Minor Fortitude, Minor Intellect, and Minor Endurance. Of course, with all Mythics, there is a downside. And this one is, while it's equipped, you can't swap bars. But honestly, is that really a downside on this one? Because once you slip this ring on, you're going to go from zero to hero. Alright, that's enough out of us. Now get out there and take on the whole world with one bar behind your back. And that wraps up another guide. We really appreciate hanging out with us till the end. It helps us out more than you know. And if this guide helped you, why not go ahead and give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe and ring that bell for notifications so you get notified of new content when it comes out. Oh, and if you're looking for mythics and other stuff, we have playlists right over there. So feel free to sift through the content and find what you need. Speaking of new content, Robert, get over here. I found a new game. It's quite intriguing. I want to beat you at it. And with that, we hope to see you in the next one. Okay, that does look pretty interesting. What's it called? People are calling it Tot. Uh... 
What, what's taught? Seriously, Robert, it stands for Tales of Tribute. All right, Rose, if we're going to do this, you're going to need to go get us an order of fishing sticks. Fine. 